let's talk about importing CSVs into QGIS. So sometimes when you are looking for data online, the format that you find data in will be CSV. So it will be .csv, as in this case. If you download this file and open it using the default program for opening it, it's usually going to open in a spreadsheet program such as this one and you can interact with the cells as individual cells. They're much like any other um, spreadsheet format, except they're, they're an even simpler version of a spreadsheet format. So for example, if I open this with a text editor, you can see that it's really just text separated by these commas. And these commas are where the columns turn go from this date column to the lat column to the long column right so so that's what a csv looks like when you open it csv stands for comma separated values um, because there are commas between the values so we know how to open these files in a spreadsheet program or in a text editor, but how do you open them in QGIS? There's one way. If you do it the way that that we're used to adding data to our QGIS, um, sometimes we, we will just drag shapefiles over, and you can do that with a spreadsheet, actually, with a CSV. You can import the data this way, but it's not spatial. As you can see, uh, we can say zoom to layer. It doesn't go anywhere. There is no data here to show. And if we open the attribute table, it should just be our spreadsheet, essentially. So you see the column headers are here correctly, and the values look essentially the way we expect them to look. Um, so, so there are reasons that you might import a spreadsheet this way. Um, for example, if you didn't have any spatial data here, uh, you could do it that way. Um, generally, if you have spatial data in your spreadsheet, you're going to want to do it um, this way that I'm going to show you. And there are two ways to get to this. Um, one is by going up to layer and add layer, and then go all the way down to add delimited text layer. The other way to do the same exact thing is to find, um, there are a bunch of add layer buttons here on the left for me. Um, there's one that has a comma on it for comma separated values. Click that. And we will get a dialog like this. <clears throat> and it will ask us for a file name and this will do okay and it opens a preview down here um, if if your format was a little bit more complicated for example sometimes people format data with tabs between the columns or uh, sometimes you'll see semicolons um, then you could do that here. In this case, we want to stick with CSV. If there were multiple header lines at the top, you could discard some here. And generally, you want to trim fields. Trimming fields gets rid of uh, blank spaces that are not going to generally be useful. Sometimes you need those. Uh, for the most part, you want to leave this on. Um, <clears throat> And then this bottom part here is going to walk us through making sure that our data becomes spatial so that we actually have points to work with. So there are three options here. The first is point coordinates. That is, in this case, what we're working with, where each row has two columns for the point coordinates. One is for the X coordinate and one is for the Y coordinate. Um, and you can see that that QGIS guessed that we want the 
LON column to be the X field, so longitude. Since longitude is the X component of that point, then this works fine. Um, and it guessed well in this case, and it picked a lat for the Y field. So it guessed well. Sometimes if your columns are named differently, Q just won't guess as well. So keep that in mind. Other than the point coordinates, there is well-known text. Well-known text can store more than just points. It can store lines and polygons. And sometimes you will get spreadsheets like this with well-known text in them. I don't see it that often, um, but that's that's a possibility. And importing with no geometry, that is exactly like dragging the spreadsheet into QGIS, as I showed you earlier. I'm not going to touch these settings using a spatial index. That's generally a good thing to do. Um, and when I hit OK, it's going to ask me which which projection we're in. And in this case, um, so spreadsheets don't inherently have a projection. They're just spreadsheets. They're just CSV files. They're just text files. There's nothing in them that tells QGIS which projection they're in. In this case, it picked WGS84 for me. That might be because I used it most recently. It might be because um, because it's guessing well in this case, because we are using latitude and longitude, uh, we would want to use WGS84. Sometimes when you're getting data from uh, municipal governments or state governments, that data in a CSV, it might be in another projection. So if we were getting data from New York City, it might be coming in 2263. So we would select that here. But in this case, we just want WGS84. I'm going to hit OK. And you can see that our data seems to have loaded just fine. Um, I'll, I will generally load some other geometries just to make sure that um, nothing has gone completely haywire. In this case, let's open city council districts. And you can see, yes. Yes, it looks like it worked fine. And one last check, let's look in the attribute table for this uh, for this layer. And you can see that everything was imported as expected. So that is how you import CSVs into QGIS.